Hi everyone, this video is going to be a short tutorial to show you how to create an Airbnb-like map on your Bubble app. So just to go straight to the point, these are the results that we're aiming for. So you're going to have a map with the current markers for all of your listings or your items that are in your Bubble database. And when you click on your marker, you zoom in on the city and you display your listing. And you can, of course, close the card, reopen another one. It's always going to recenter and adjust the map, and users can still zoom in or zoom out as they want. Um, okay, so you're going to need a few things to achieve that. So first, you're going to need a specific page where you're going to display that map. And you're going to put a map element from Bubble directly. So you have them there at the bottom, if I recall correctly. Yeah, just right there. So you're going to use that map elements and you're going to have some kind of guard card or whatever you're going to need to display the database item. So I already had my card all created. And from there, I'm grouping the map and the card together in the group. And I'm going to put them in the layout, which is aligned to parents. And I'm going to make sure that my card is always going to be in the middle of that container. So it's always adjusting properly. For your listing cards, you're going to have to make sure that you're pulling the data from the map's current marker. So here in my database, I'm using something which I called thing, but it can be users, it can be listings, it can be whatever you're using at that point, And that needs to be displayed on that map. And make sure that the data source is well dynamic and it's the map's current marker. Uh, you also going to have to add some conditions. So here I'm checking that if the map's current marker is empty, I'm actually hiding the group. Uh, this is quite important. I'm going to explain what right after. Um, here you saw that I actually have two groups because I decided to put also a close icon on my card, which means that the users can also decide to hide a listing if they want it. You can put that icon in a group and you're also going to use the line to parent layout. So you make sure that your close icon is always on the top left of that container. All right, back to the map elements. When you get into your map, um, this is actually a bug from Bubble. I used a different icon just to test out and now it's kind of stuck there, but I'm not using it anymore. So yeah. Just ignore that. <laughs> you just have your map in there and you're going to use number of markers list and type of markers. Then you're going to use your data type here. So it could be user thing, whatever here we're working with things. You're going to define a data source for th these things. Uh, so do a search for or a filter or whatever here. I have several of these repeating groups on my pages. So I'm just using the data from the repeating groups just for the sake of the example. The address field is probably the most important field. So you're going to make sure that you're actually binding to a geographic address. And that has to be a field in your actual element in your data type. Here, show title window, we're going to check no. And here you can use the allow zooming and dragging if that works for you. So that kind of sums it up for the UI. There is not much more than that. So now we're just going to wire the workflows. First, the most important one is that we're going to check every time a maps marker is clicked. So this is actually an action you have access to in elements, a maps marker is clicked. And when you get there, make sure you select the right map. From there, you have several map actions. So you can look for, for them by just typing map. And here you can say we have adjust map zoom. And this is the one we're going to use. So we're going to adjust the zoom and we're going to make sure we're going to center and zoom manually on the current markers address which means that we're basically going to shift every time the perspective towards the new listing that was selected by the user. Uh, you can use a zoom uh, if you want to. I'll let you test it out. And from there, you're going to show your listing card map or whatever you called it, this group where you're going to display the thing you want to show. OK, once this is done for the map, you're also going to wire the close icon. If you decided to to add one, you don't have to. But the only thing you need to do is basically hide the card every time people click on close. So that's another workflow. And yeah, that was for my search results. So we're not going to use that now. And that's actually pretty much it. <laughs> you don't need anything else. Uh, let's test it out. So I've got all my listings. I can zoom in, I can zoom out. But if I click, yeah, I'm zooming on the city. I can close my cards. I can check other things and I get zoomed in again. 
Good, I hope that was helpful. Of course, let me know if you have any further questions and I'm always happy to help. And if you like this video, please comment, like, subscribe. Thank you, bye.